Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last lecture, we saw how to reduce any matrix whose entries are in a Euclidean domain to Smith form. The same thing can be done over a principal ideal domain, but the algorithm is a little more involved. So let me explain what modifications are required to work over, mat uh, work over matrices uh, with entries in a principal ideal domain. So if you recall the algorithm, one of the steps was that you had a matrix uh, and we were trying to clear out the entries of the first row and first column. So we had this matrix like this and then the first row and first column had some entries. And for the moment, let's just focus on trying to clear out the first row. Say there's some entry here A1J in the first row and Jth column that we want to clear out. And so when we were in the Euclidean domain, we were looking at the case of trying to clear out A1J using A11 and failing which we would somehow try to reduce uh, the size of A11. So we had um, uh, the case where if A11 divides A1J, then you just do um, Cj goes to Cj minus Q C1 where um, a1j is equal to qa11 a1j but if a11 does not divide a1j then what we did was uh, we used the euclidean algorithm so then what we know is that uh, a1j equals qa11 plus r where d of r is strictly less than d of a11 and then what we did was we did cj goes to cj minus qc1 and then we got r in this position over here and then we interchanged cj and c1 so let me show you how to modify these steps when we don't have a uh, euclidean domain and therefore we do not have the euclidean division algorithm so if a11 divides a1j then all is well we can just uh, use this step to clear out a1j but if a11 does not divide a1j, so suppose now r is a PID, not necessarily a Euclidean domain. Then what should I do? So firstly, what I know is that if A11 does not divide A1j, then that means that A1j is not in the ideal generated by A11. That means that the ideal generated by A11 and A1j is strictly larger than the ideal generated by A11. On the other hand, we are working in a principal ideal ring so this ideal is generated by a single element so let r be such that r actually generates a11 and a1j okay so what that means is that r lies in the ideal generated by a11 and a1j so what we have is that r is equal to a11 times x plus a1j times y and also r divides a11 and r divides a1j well this means that i can write um, a11 as q11 times r and this means that i can write a1j as q1j times r so what i get is 1 is equal to uh, q11 times x plus q1j 
times y just taking this first equation and dividing both sides by r so we have this and now what i'll do is i'll construct a matrix t uh, so instead of doing column operations i'm going to be right multiplying by this matrix t and this matrix t is of the following form in the one one position i'm going to put x and uh, it's going to have mostly uh, zeros everywhere but in the jth row here i'll put y and then i'll have um, uh, identity uh, ones along the diagonal except now again in the jth row and jth column i'm going to put a11 and over here i'm going to put negative of a1 not a11 q11 and here i'm going to put negative of q1j and i'm going to continue with the ones over here and this is going to be an n by n matrix uh, with entries in r and everything else in this matrix is zero okay so zeros everywhere so the only interesting it's it's basically the identity matrix except for the two diagonal entries are changed to x and q11 and the corresponding off diagonal elements are y and minus q1j then note that determinant of t is equal to well it's basically the identity matrix the only thing that matters the determinant of this 2 by 2 block so it's x times q11 plus y times q1j so determinant of t is 1 which implies that t belongs to gln r now if you do a goes to instead of doing a column operation you take a by a t then what can you say about the matrix a t then the one month entry of a t what will be the one month entry of a t so to get the one month entry of a t i have to take the first column of t and i have to multiply it by the first row of a and what i'll get is a11 times x uh, plus a1j times y so i'll get r over here and i don't really care what i get anywhere else the point is that the ideal generated by r strictly contains the ideal generated by a1 and a is equivalent to at because t is in glnr so this is the modification that uh, we do uh, to clear out um, entries say in the first row in the induction step of computing the smith canonical form but it's not the result is not exactly the same earlier what we did is we found r such that d of r is strictly less than uh, d of a11 but here we are just finding r such that the ideal generated by r is strictly larger than the ideal generated by a11 so one more modification is needed so of course this this kind of modification you can do even if you want to clear out all the entries of the first column and um, so um, so that's that's basically the only times that we used uh, the euclidean property when we wanted to clear out the entries of the first row or the entries of the first column but the result is also not quite the same instead of getting an element whose size is strictly less uh, an element in the one month place whose tried size is strictly less than the element in the one month place that we had earlier now we have an element in the one month place whose uh, ideal which generates an ideal that is strictly larger than the ideal generated by the element in the one month place earlier so for euclidean domains uh, we had this uh, um, trick to show that the process of trying to clear out uh, the first row and first column must stop after finitely many steps with success because we cannot indefinitely keep reducing the size of an element of the Euclidean domain. Uh, for PIDs, we will just use the Noetherian condition. So for um, Euclidean domains, we used the fact that 
ba11 cannot be reduced indefinitely because it starts with some finite value and then we know that the values it takes are all non-negative integers so if you reduce it a finite number of times you cannot reduce it any further um, so for general PIDs we will use the fact that a PID is a Noetherian ring cannot be enlarged indefinitely because then you would end up with a chain of ideals an increasing chain of ideals that doesn't stabilize and so the process must stop after finite steps mm -hmm.